Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's Daily Word. Today, Wednesday, October 13th. Glad you could join me for our few minutes together. Kind of an interesting morning. A little chilly and a little bit of fog. Sunshine. But it's a beautiful day in the middle of October. So I'm glad you could join me for our few minutes together as we continue our conversation in the Daily Word and what it means for us and how it affects our lives. Um, today is day number 375, and so uh, it's interesting as I put those numbers in and how many days we have spent together doing this Daily Word conversation. And it's a good conversation that we continue to have together. <clears throat> so I, I was thinking last night uh, about things that bother me. And, you know, I, some days... Some days I have a long list of things that bother me. You know, things get under my skin, uh, things that just, I say, drive me crazy. Some days the list is short, but then I got to thinking last night about what are those things that bother me and why do they bother me? And, you know, some of them, I suppose, have good reasons behind them. And many of them have very little reason behind them, except that, I don't know. Um, I find them annoying, if nothing else. So this scripture, I think, at least for me, speaks a bit about that. So from Psalm 39, verses 1 through 3, we hear these words. I said, I will watch my ways and keep my tongue from sin. I will put a muzzle on my mouth while in the presence of the wicked. So I remain utterly silent not even saying anything good. But my anguish increased. My heart grew hot within me. While I meditated, the fire burned. Then I spoke with my tongue. I found this interesting to think about as we live our lives. And, you know, as I think about the importance of the words that we say and what it is for us, that we should say. And, you know, sometimes, and you've heard me say it in our conversation together, sometimes I think that we are simply called to not say anything, you know, to keep our thoughts to ourselves. Sometimes, you know, well, just because our words are so powerful, you know, and when words are spoken in anger, when words are spoken um, loud, when we yell at each other, when we say things that aren't true, all those words carry meaning. So the psalmist, you know, kind of this text ends with a cliffhanger. It seems like some wrongdoer is rubbing it in everyone's face. And the question for us in the midst of that is, should I say something? And I have to tell you, I often find myself in the psalmist's shoes. And maybe you do as well. It's one of the things that social media has done to us. You know, we can say whatever we want through the protection of a device or a screen. A long time ago, when I was pastoring a church in Lima, um, it's when social media was just getting its footing and, you know, MySpace was the big deal then. And the kids would get on the computers at church, and they'd end up talking to somebody. And I would watch them typing feverishly. And I would often say to them, so if that person was sitting right in front of you, would you say the exact words that you're typing? And more often than not, their answer was no, because they felt safe behind a screen. They felt safe, you know, to say whatever they wanted because the other person couldn't attack them, either verbally or even physically for that matter, because they could be miles and miles and miles and miles away from each other um, and be protected because they could say whatever they wanted. I found myself in the psalmist's shoes. I read social media. I read what people have to say. Um, and I just get disappointed and there are so many times that I want to say something. 
I want to just get on my computer or on my phone and just type a bunch of words. But instead, I don't. I, I figure that that's not going to gain me anything with people. And what it typically does, when I have done it once or twice, what it's done is gets me into a long conversation that I'm only going to lose or perceivably lose because no matter what I say, you know, they've decided their opinion is right. And maybe, maybe I've done the same thing. I've decided my opinion is right. We hold our tongues, we muzzle our mouths while heat builds in our hearts. Now, Scripture, I wonder, when I read this, does the psalmist just advise us to meekly stay silent, to not do anything? No, it, it doesn't tell us to do that. Instead, what does the psalmist tell us to do in this text? My anguish increased. My heart grew hot within me while I meditated. The psalmist calls us to pray. The psalmist advises us not to bottle up our anger, but the psalmist also advises us to not immediately unleash our anger against someone else. Instead, we're called to pour out our hot rage in prayer before God, holding nothing back. Think about what that might mean for us. You know, when I could still mow grass, and when I did mow grass, whether it be on a lawnmower, you know, when I li we lived in the country, or um, on 70, when we lived on Cumberland Avenue and I mowed the first four or five yards, and I did that for exercise, and I put my headphones on, and, and there are times that I just mowed, and I went out to mow, to burn off some energy. Sometimes that energy was anger. And I would spend that time um, in prayer, in conversation, in letting this anger not burn inside of me, but pouring it out to God. And I wonder for us, you know, in this day of social media, in this day of I'm just saying whatever we want, and we think it just goes without repercussion, even when it's not the truth, and we just say whatever we want. And then we laugh about it and say, well, I'm just, I'm just stirring the pot. Well, you know, I, I mean, I don't know. I miss the days of just conversation. You know, I miss the days of conversation around the coffee cup. Like at church. I miss the days in the Mission Cafe. I, I miss the days of of coffee hour after worship. Um, miss the days of just of lunch with the pastor and just gathering and and being in conversation. Because while we didn't we didn't express anger in those conversations and gatherings, we talked to each other. We shared our lives with each other. And it's in those ways, you know, that that we get to know each other. I'm thinking long and hard about what that means for us and and how it is that we together might engage with each other. Um, I I know that social media has its place. It's it's this. You know, when Facebook went down the other day, churches like ours, you know, who rely on it heavily for this and Sunday morning and and communication, it's it's one interesting thing to think about not having it. But then I think sometimes, well, if we didn't have it, we'd have to talk to each other. We'd have to, we'd have to get on the phone again. You know, we'd have to, have to have conversations with each other. But the psalmist, the psalmist reminds us, friends, to watch our ways, to keep our tongue from sin, to muzzle our mouth. And then when it seems like we just can't anymore, the psalmist says to pray, to pour it out to God and allow God to show us the words we ought to say and the way we ought to respond to people around us. You know, 
I'm not perfect. I, I mess up. Sometimes, you know, I, I say things I shouldn't say. I know. I know that I do. And I don't, and I don't like it. And it burdens me and it bothers me. And it might bother me for a day or two or five days um, when I say things I really shouldn't say. But then I'm reminded that the psalmist, the psalmist calls us to deep prayer to meditation, to pour it out to God. And then, after praying about it, after pouring it out to God, then, then we can discern whether we should speak or whether we should stay silent. And I think that's good advice for us. Now, I know that for the 799% of the 700 and some Facebook friends I have, or whatever the number is, I'm not going to change their mind. They are going to say whatever they want. They're going to hate somebody else. They're going to hate politicians. They're going to hate the person on the other side of the street, the person that thinks different from them politically or theologically. I Look, I get that. But for me, and, and maybe for you, this advice would be enough that, at least for us, uh, we could look deep inside of ourselves. As we think about, he, here's the thing that I guess struck me about this. So we've been doing this daily word for 375 particular days. And we've talked about all kinds of scripture. In the daily word, my intent always was, from day one, uh, March 16th, to simply help us, you know, give us something to hold on to day to day. And, and that continues to be my reason for doing this every single day. So if for us, this daily word conversation is simply about that, then it's really about me. It's really about you. It's really about whoever watches. Um, in person or in the moment watches some hours from now it's really about us isn't it and our conversation with God our connection with God our behavior pray about it the scripture says and only after praying then we seek discernment about whether we should speak or whether we should stay silent. And if the daily word is anything, it's for you and I then to examine what this means for us and how it then might affect today. And if we've done that, then, you know, our time together has been good. So, I need this. I need to always discern about what I'm going to say and not going to say and then use that um, to build the kingdom of God as we see it. So I pray this is a good word. I pray it's important, it's personal enough for you that we might think about it. So enjoy the beauty of today, friends. Know God's mercy and grace and love that surrounds you and empowers you. Um, know that God hears our fervent prayers and guides us in our words. And then know of my love for all of you and i will see you tomorrow at 10 o'clock have a great day